What's up, MMA fans? Today we are catching up once again with uh, ATT MMA coach, Marcos Parrumpinha da Mata. Welcome, my friend. Thank you so much for having me again. Yeah, Parrumpa, we just got the news that uh, Islam Mahashev got hurt and Sarukan will not face him. Uh, how was that for you guys? How, how are you guys playing in the camp? when he will return to the camp? Well, there was something that we already kind of like heard from a few different people, you know, he had left the fight against Dustin a little bit like washed out and tired. So he would need a little more time, time to recover. So we knew that it's going to be a little closer to the end of the year, you know, which is something that is really actually better for, for us because we have, we might have uh, uh, Pantoja fighting soon, you know, around that, that time. So I, I wasn't really too uh, happy to have to go to uh, uh, away from, from Pantoja for a, a while. So it planned out fine. You know, Arma is already in shape. You know, he's always in shape, but he's, he's you know, training back home and just waiting for his suspension to be lift to change from nine to six months. And then we're going to have a date, maybe November, maybe December. And then we'll come back to, to Florida to finish uh, uh, his camp so we can go for um, the title shot. Uh, you, you're talking about Pantoja. There are a lot of names can, coming up. Uh, Mukaev just left uh, UFC, so he's not, he's not uh, among the names anymore. But we have Tyra. We have... Uh, I heard about Cerrudo, I heard, of course, Albazi, and now Azakura coming from Japan. Who do you think UFC will choose to face Pantoja next? I think the, 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 the most natural names will be, I mean, I think, to be honest, the, the name that makes more sense right now, it's Tatsuru Taya, because he's already in the UFC, he's already... Um, uh, had some fights in UFC. He finished Paris. It was um, uh, was I want I'm not gonna say it was a fluke, but it was a, a an injury, you know. But nonetheless, it was a, it was a finish, you know. I don't think Albazi is ready. He's been a long time getting hurt, trying to get better. So I don't think he's he's you know in. in in a position to go for a title shot. His last fight was a while ago. That fight, a lot of people thought he lost the fight. So I don't think he's in the position to be like going from that scenario straight to a title shot. You know, I think, I think Cejudo doesn't make any sense for the UFC, you know, because he retired when he was on top. You know, he beat Dominic Cruz, amazing, retired came back wasn't that great you know lost went back to retirement now he's gonna come back and the weight division below the 125 fight for the fight for the belt and then what what happens if he wins is he gonna defend or is he gonna retire again so for the UFC I don't think this makes sense at all you know it's a big name for us it would be uh, a big name, you know, even though Pantoja and Cejudo are friends, you know, they have a history, especially because of the ultimate fighter, you know, but I don't think this makes sense at all for the UFC, you know, I think uh, bringing more people to challenge Pantoja, since he has so many wins against so many fighters on the top 15, you know, I think it makes sense bring people, you know, from other shows, but I think, for example, Asakura coming from, from Rising, I think he should do one fight at least. Make sure that he makes 125 because in Rising he was, he was fighting at 135. You know, come to UFC, get a fight, get a win, look good, and then go for the title. I think that's what makes more sense. You know, since Mokiev is not in the UFC anymore, you know, I don't think that's another option other than those those names that we talked about, you know, maybe, maybe if Kai Tata France beats Ursag in, in Australia, he might be a name that people will, you know, actually talk about. 
I don't think that he beats her sag. I think her sag is a little better than him, you know, in a better momentum, you know, so we'll see, you know, I, I mean, I think in the end of this next month, we're going to have a decision, a, a, a position from the UFC and a name for us. What about Kayla Harrison? Is, is she already back in the camp planning to, to get a uh, next fight? She probably will have a, Next fight, and then if she wins, she'll get a title shot. She she's planning to fight when? Well, Kayla's already in camp, already looking good, you know, down in weight. She's already looking, you know, ready for fight. Uh, she fights October fifth, but since I don't know if he's already signed or not, I can say the name of the the opponent. But that's for number one contender spot. She wins this fight, she's gonna get the winner of Pennington and Pena which is, they're going to fight on that exact same show. And um, I think Kayla's ready. Kayla is, Kayla is as ready as she can be to, to go for the title, to be a champion, and to start her legacy as a UFC champion. Uh, also about the final of uh, the, the lightweight Grand Prix, you have uh, Shabili with uh, Usman. You, you said back in the days, I remember you said, man, this, this must be the final. Shabil is the toughest guy out there. I remember once you said, for me, Shabil, Usman, and Islam are the three best lightweights in the world. How do you see that, that one happening? Well, finally, we're going to have that final. You know, after the suspension is lift from Usman, I think Shabili um, was kind of like... Um, unfavored on this whole thing, you know? I mean, he didn't do anything wrong, and he's still being penalized because he didn't fight for a million dollars yet. You know, I think he, a Bellator should have him fought and, and, and fought, fought someone, whether it was Brent Primus, who was the last one who fought Usman, or maybe McGee, or somebody in that tournament for the final, so the million dollars. And now, whoever won that final would fight Usman. You know, I think that was the right right thing to do. You know, unfortunately, that didn't happen, you know. Um, but Shabley is an amazing, amazing fighter. I think, in my opinion, you know, now at, now nowadays, is Islam, Usman, Shabley, and Sarukian. Those are the four best lightweights in the world right now. You know, a lot of people don't know Shabley or Usman because they're in Bellator. But they're extremely good fighters with extremely good... Uh, um, abilities, you know, I mean, both guys are complete fighters. They're good on standing. They're good on the ground. They're good in grappling. They're good in wrestling. It's it's going to be an amazing, amazing fight September 7th in uh, San Diego. So I'm really, I'm really happy to see that this has finally happened, you know, so we can close this chapter and move on with Chablis. Great. And Pahupa, oh, we got some uh, nice news about the rules changing in MMA. Uh, about the elbows and the down position definition. How do you see that, that change? I think that's a step up. I think this is something that should be should have been done a while ago, you know, because the 12 6 elbow rule is to me is kind of like dumb, you know. I mean, yeah, 12 to 6 is good, but then if you can change a little bit, just one degree angle, you're fine. You know, I don't see that how that changes. You know, like always the referee said, oh, just angle a little bit, you'll be fine. I mean, so that doesn't make sense to me. You know, so on that matter, I think it should have been done, should have been done a while ago. You know, about the, the grounded opponent, I think that's an evolution. You know, it's too hard for you to see if the fighter is like this, this, or this. You know, it's too quick. MMA, everything happens so fast. So we have to go to watch the video and see if the referee made a mistake or not. All of a sudden, the guy's cut, can continue. You know, I think that's those two changes are both evolutions on 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 the MMA scene nowadays. I think this is going to help a lot. You know, on on how the fighters will actually act. You want to be grounded? Put the knee down. Put both knees down. You know, stop playing this kind of game. You know, especially on the cage now. now Put the name, put the hand up and down. Just put the knee down, you know, and, and go from there. I think that's, those are two very good changes 
for for the MMA. If you could change anything else, what would you would you change for the evolution of the sports? In my opinion, I think two things that will be like major. Number one, every referee should have a grappling or jiu-jitsu background. This way they would understand when to stand up a fight, when to break up a fight, for example, on the cage. They're not going for takedowns or going for takedowns, you know. So I think the grappling and the jiu-jitsu or even wrestling um, background will help the referee to, to know those things, you know. And another thing I think that all, all judges or at least, 90% of the judges should be former MMA fighters because, it, it, first off, it would help the community. You have so many guys that now are unemployed, you know, and not making any money. They could be still involved with the sport and help the sport out because when you misjudge a fight, you, you can change somebody's life for the worse. You know, so when you have a, a, a guy that has been there, has done that, and, and obviously everybody's subject to make a mistake, but the mistake will be a lot less. You know, you cannot, you cannot have one guy judging 30 27 to one fighter, and the other judge is giving 29 that somebody saw something different. You know, so we need to, to help. You know, the, 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 the sports to first educate more, both referees and judges. So this way it will be less, less um, uh, mistakes and less controversy about the, 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 the decisions. You know, I think that's major and it has to happen soon. Great, Pahompa, great point. Uh, you, just to finish, you are in Colombia right now. Tell us uh, what you're doing about the steam cell stuff. And I see many people doing that right now. Tell us about that. Yeah, this, man, th th this place here is nowadays the number one uh, steam cell center in the world. It's called Bioaccelerator. You know, it's so professional. From, from the moment that we, we land in Colombia, Medellin, until we leave, everything is taken care of, you know, the people are very professional, they, they actually explain to you every step of the way, I'm being treated my whole body, you know, and every day, they, they make sure that you understand, they make sure that you do everything that you're supposed to be doing on your, on your off hours, make sure that, you know, every, every, every employee is doing what they're, they're supposed to do to make you feel better, you know? So, man, I, I've been, I, I'm here treating my entire body. I'm doing both local injections and the IV drip, you know? So there's like two different ways to treat the injuries, you know, the, 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 the local injections actually when uh, it's right at the place, at the spot that you're, your, your, you have your injury and stuff, and the drip goes to your entire body. So I'm hoping, and I'm pretty sure that it's going to help me so much, you know, and hopefully more people know about this medicine. No more, more people know more about the technology because it really helps you getting um, better, better quality of life, better sleep, better daily basis stuff you know like sleep well um do your 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 housework you know well you know without pain you know train without pain you know fight without pain so this is something that it really it really is number one technology in the world right now as far as you know um rehabilitation and recovery so i'm hoping that i feel great my body feels great and i can be a testimony for, for these guys, you know. Oh, great. Thank you, Pahupinha. It was a pleasure to interview you. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for having me again. Bye. Bye.